Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about lick templates. Now I've done that in the past, but I'm going to run you through uh, something that, that popped up in my practice the other day and how uh, I, I moved it through a few tonalities to create some interesting sounds. Um, so if you haven't seen the older videos on sort of reusing uh, templates uh, in your licks, the, the idea is really if you've got something that you've worked on, it could be a picking lick or it could be a melodic motif, a sequence or something, um, to really exhaust the possibilities with it to, to run it through different modes and scales so that you can use it in more than one place. You don't want to do all this work on a lick and then only have one way of, of using it. So this is the thing that um, popped up in my playing the other day and I moved it around a little bit around E mixolydian from the key of A. Uh, I did a quick example of this on Instagram with no explanation uh, the other day, but I'm going to break it down for you now. So thinking over an E dominant chord, I played this lick here. So you can already hear there's a bit of a formula to it. it it's quite a logical sounding lick. So let me talk about what I'm actually doing. Uh, I'm thinking in the key of, you know, the, the A major scale shapes, but instead of using like those six notes there, I play on the um, E string and just on the B string. So that's my six note unit. Now I could have just moved that down the strings and stayed in that position, but I thought it would be fun to slide it up. So I did, once I went there, I slid up to the G sharp and I did a new unit between the B and the G strings. Then I decided to slide back down uh, and then use it on the G and the D strings. You guessed it, back up for the next pair, back down. And I could have just stopped it there, but on the actual lick I went. All right, so now that you know what the unit is, listen now for it. So you've got, it's a six note thing and I'm playing it in uh, 16th note triplets. Cool, now even though I was thinking over a D chord, uh, an E chord, sorry, uh, I could have played that over a D chord to create uh, a D Lydian sound. And it would have sounded just, just fine over that. Uh, B minor, I could have made a, a Dorian idea. That kind of thing. So I'm already thinking different uses, right? But with the same pattern. Now, staying in that same key, I could move it up to some, some other A major scale shapes uh, and do that. So if I take it up, say, to the D note, a minor third higher, uh, and do this. So I've adjusted the shape to suit the, the you know, the position that I'm in, and then I'm going to do the same thing for every slide up and slide down that I do. So, sorry, that should be. All right, so connect that. That's going to sound great over that chord or the other two chords I mentioned as well. So I'm already using it in a different way. Um, let's think different scale altogether. So normally at that point, my brain goes, what about pentatonic? So uh, if I pick a nice comfortable pentatonic like E minor to try this through, I'm going to do that because there are lots of minor third and whole tone stretches along particular strings. So thinking uh, along those lines, if I start in my box one of E minor, Easy enough. Now I've got to slide up, but it's going to be a minor third slide up to this shape. That's the trickiest one actually, because the, the entire span between that string pair is the widest. Down, up, down. All right, so put that together, uh, slow tempo. Sounding good so far. 
The next thing my brain normally goes to is, okay, what about darker sounds? So if I think E Phrygian dominant from A harmonic minor is always a, a go-to for me, as you guys know. Um, so let's work within the, the area where I, you know, I and Ingve and everybody else normally does their kind of, <laughs> that kind of stuff. So if I think about that position, but this sequence, cool. So this is the one where I slide down. Actually, what I'll do this time is I'll slide down for everything and show you where it goes. So it actually ends up outlining that familiar. All right, so slowly. So that gives me another alternative to doing the typical, you know, that, that yeah, we've all done a million times. All right, so let's do the Phrygian dominant one again, but we'll, we'll do the, the shift up and shift down uh, approach. So if I do that step by step, I get this. Next one's gonna give me a bit of a stretch there. Cool. So I've already created like what's that four or five different uh, uses for that uh, pattern, and I could I could spend probably a whole practice session just exhausting the ideas and then cataloging the ones that I really like. And then that will become sort of the next day's practice as well. So sort of if I if I looked at that as a three day process, day one would be just getting used to the original idea. Day two would be experimenting and day three would be getting better at the options that I liked from day two. All right. You get the benefit of seeing the tabs down below. I didn't. I had to create them. So uh, enjoy those and uh, we'll do it again very soon. Enjoy.